Now, what was once a very westernised city is patrolled 24 hours a day by armed men known as the Hizba that travel throughout the city enforcing their mandate. Vice News joined Hizba patrol leader Abu Ubaidah during Ramadan as they headed to the local market. <laughs> On this day, the Hizbah must pay particularly close attention that people are following the rules regarding the holy month of Ramadan. Amongst other things, this means the eating, drinking and smoking are forbidden each day until sundown. <laughs> They're not in school because school was supposed to start on Monday, but because of all the problems here in Ferguson, they've, they've had a bit of an extension on their summer break. Thank you. All right, we got six done. Hello, me and DeAndre here. As I was saying, this Michael Brown stuff has just gotten out of hand. I mean, Caleb was doing some of the protests. Yeah, I went to market. Hey, Michael Brown like me. I just don't understand why they're doing all this looting. They did the looting. They proved it. They proved that they are mad, but they don't have to do all of this. This is just crazy now. Yeah. Our parents are scared for us to even come outside. Quick Trip was my, one of the best gas stations I've ever met. My favorite candy was at Quick Trip, and they burnt that down. I can't oh, yeah. get that. Have Hopefully, some. we go back to school. I'm going to the first grade. Everybody say your I'm grades right now. Third. First, third, third. six. I mean fifth. Middle school. I mean fifth. <laughs> okay, say something.
I'm thinking what I'm going to say. These people are, are pretty weird because <coughs> Family Dollar is my favorite. Family Dollar is my favorite shop and they broke into it. I don't want this to happen. This thing that's going around, like all this negative energy that's going around in our community is really affecting our kids and us as well. All this nonsense that's going on, the police need to take responsibility. It was you guys' fault. That little boy came to my job and he was not a bad person at all. And I can really say, he was not a bad person. And for y'all to sit here and do this mayhem and create all this chaos because of what's going on in our community, it's silly. It's silly to me. Y'all shouldn't have to to lay an 18 year old boy down. This boy wasn't doing nothing. He was finna start school. What did he really do? How can we protect our kids from these criminals and all this unjust stuff that's going on? How are we supposed to call the police? Who are we supposed to call when we're supposed to protect our kids? We said twist it. Twist it. Twist it. The time right now is about nearly 2 a.m. I am standing in the middle of Bronstein Park in Manchester and as you can see over at Cumberland Farms near Central High School ambulance, firefighters and uh, other various uh, first responders I have no idea what they're doing there perhaps there has been another overdose in Manchester who knows but what I am doing standing here in the middle of Bronstein Park at 2 o'clock in the morning is an act of civil disobedience because the park has been banned. The public cannot enter the park. For whatever reason, the city has decided that nobody shall enter this park. Just like the city decided nobody shall shop at T and gas on Bridge Street. I am of the belief that we do not live in a police state. So therefore, I am risking my own personal uh, uh, comfort by leaving my $200,000 house and my $400 bed and I'm grabbing my bicycle and a sleeping bag and I'm going to sleep in Bronstein Park. Even though my buddy is having a party for his 50th birthday tomorrow, Saturday, actually today, and I may have to be incarcerated for that entire party until a judge shows up on Monday morning to bail me out, miss a day of work, miss my whole weekend, of which I worked 55 hours Monday through Friday, paying my taxes for the privilege of what? There's a guy going down the wrong way street. One wrong way down the one-way street and there goes the police chasing them and what am I doing what am I doing standing in a park not bothering anybody a natural man might not be able to see but there's a statue of Mr. Bronstein Probably 3.15 in the morning. Uh, 
probably pick the hardest patch of dirt in the entire park to try to sleep <laughs> in the loudest corner of the entire park closest to combies closest to the park benches where the people are sitting talking complaining about being locked out complaining about their boyfriends um, I must have heard the F word 25 times whatever it is what it is it's the park it's the middle of the night and I'm not getting a very good night's sleep <laughs> but that's the deal right <sighs> anyhow yeah so up in the park and I didn't get arrested but I heard people getting kicked out last night it must have been about uh, 4 in the morning but I laid low stayed where I was waited to see if the voice who told those guys to leave was going to tell me to leave and uh, never did never came up to me of course I'm laying low right next to like the only bush one of the two bushes in the park the rest are all trees I want to have some kind of you know shelter next to me uh, the freedom to sell lemonade and like zoning restrictions and taxes and all those arguments that go into uh, things about why people can't sell lemonade I think it's ridiculous that uh, that a young person can't go out and sell lemonade and get uh, introduced to entrepreneurship by doing that. I think it's ridiculous. Period. So you don't agree that kids should have to file tax forms and uh, no, zoning no, restriction no, ordinances? No, no, no. Come on. Come on, this is America. Isn't this how all entrepreneurs start out, is selling lemonade? And, and <laughs> so am I advocating breaking the law when it comes to selling lemonade? Uh, I guess so. I guess for youngsters selling lemonade, I guess I'm a civil disobedient. That's good to hear. <laughs> uh, for another question in a totally different direction, uh, the Obama administration was given an award recently in secret. Actually, it may have been a few months ago. They were given an award in secret, which no journalists were invited to attend. And it was an openness and uh, accountability award. <laughs> And uh, the Obama administration, as uh, following the trend of administrations before it, has been very, uh, very condemning. They come down very hard on whistleblowers, such as Bradley Manning, who's facing 52 years in prison if he's convicted. So, uh, how do you feel about the situation with WikiLeaks and the ability to have open information? I, I, I've always been, I've always supported transparent government, and I think WikiLeaks really here is just the uh, messenger. And. Uh, and that um, that they've shown uh, our our intelligence to have vulnerabilities. Well, you know what? If uh, if that intelligence then that needs to be shored up as a result of them showing the vulnerabilities, let's shore up our intelligence. I didn't find anything released by WikiLeaks that didn't kind of affirm what I'd already really thought already. To my knowledge, WikiLeaks didn't release any information that resulted in someone losing their life or being put in harm's way because their name was divulged uh, in, a, uh, uh, in a sensitive situation where, where again, they, they may have been threatened or, in fact, faced bodily harm. I'm not aware of any of that. If that happened, then I think that that crosses the line, but I'm not aware of it. <laughs> what do you think about the releases as far as what they show? Because before in history, we've never had such a clear picture of war with so many reports and so organized as the release that uh, WikiLeaks demonstrated. And right now, it seems like we're sifting through that information and society's learning more about warfare itself. I think it's positive. I, th I, think, it, I, I think we all benefit from that transparency. I think we've all had... Uh, conjecture on what that transparency was, and I don't think there are any surprises, really.
I don't know if you remember at Porkfest uh, I do, yeah. being interviewed yeah. by Dave Ridley. I'm not sure. By the, I remember it was uh, seeing the report on uh, RidleyReport.com. It was like in the hallway uh, in the back of the... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, anyway, uh, Dave Ridley went on trial today for trespassing at one event that he was at where he was filming, uh, and the police told him to leave, but they determined that he wasn't leaving fast enough and arrested him. And the video was played in court, and the judge determined that Dave was not guilty of trespassing based on the fact that, you know, he was trying to leave when they told him to. And, and one thing that really saved them in this instance was the fact that there's a videotape uh, evidence of what actually went down uh, on the scene. And one thing that's been popping up around the country is the right of people to videotape uh, police when they interact with them to have an, a, you know, an accountability, some sort of record of what actually happened. So uh, how would you weigh in on uh, situations where the police are using wiretapping laws to say that you can't record them in public? I think that's wrong. I think that that is wrong. You know, one of the one of the uh, eventual pieces of legislation that's going to get passed is that uh, video uh, evidence is not going to be admissible because it's so doctorable to virtually be able to produce you would be able to produce me committing murder and it could be a made-up video that, that would under the greatest of scrutiny, you wouldn't be able to detect whether it was a forgery or not. Mm. It's just interesting, I think. I'm sure the experts would be able to rip apart a video like that. No, they, they wouldn't be able to. That, that's my, that's it my takes point. like a Hollywood studio nowadays to create like a film that's... Uh, my, understa CGI my understanding was, was that, it, 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 that um, like eight, ten years ago, uh, it, it took a Hollywood studio and a couple million dollars to be able to do that. Uh, my understanding was just a few years ago that that price had been reduced to several thousand dollars and the expertise that went along with being able to do it, but it's getting closer and closer to the point of non-detection. Mm -hmm. Just, just, uh, just a side line. Well, that's interesting because it almost says like that there would the result would be a market for some sort of encrypted video technology where you could get that would verify uh, in some way that it was an altered, and there would be like a market for that. And I think right, yeah, yeah. But anyway, interesting. Mm -hmm. I I think I I I think that we should be able to videotape the police, anybody we want to videotape that comes in contact with you or I. Especially when that's the one type of contact that you don't choose to interact in. It's something you're legally bound to most of the right. time. Now, now, going out and secretly filming someone, that's a whole nother story, but being up front about the filming when it's you that's being come in contact with, um, that's a whole nother story, too. Hey, thanks again, Governor. Yeah, Peter. thank you, absolutely. Thanks for your activism. Okay, could you repeat that?
Oh. If you don't move, I'll move that stuff for you. How's that? Okay, so that's a threat. <laughs> a threat to move your stuff off my street? Yes. Well, I'm trying to make music here on the side. Well, for the sign saying lemonade, it implies you're selling lemonade. You have cups of distribution. Could you please just leave? I got a better idea. How about instead of selling lemonade, I'll sell memberships to the Lemonade Freedom Club. In which members... You're not allowed to bend at all on this street. What is bending, by definition? That. That is bending. What is bending? Listen, I'm not going to get into... I'm not getting a little... This, I don't understand why you're being so unreasonable. How is it unreasonable to give away Lemonade? Because you're doing it in, in my Congress Farmers Market. I'm the president. I'm the president. You do, do not allow this type of stuff. You don't allow people to You don't have a membership to the Concord Farmers Market. You can't be here doing what you're doing. It's that simple. Okay. What if I, instead of... I don't want you to, I want you to stop talking. And I want you to shut your damn turn your camera off, too. You just need to leave, please. Well, I'm not selling lemonade now. I'm filming a public event, so I'm acting as a member of the press. All right. Well, go get it out of here. Nice. Now you're shaking like a leaf because you're acting like an idiot. Yeah, because they just got assaulted move. by you. I did not assault you. Did I touch you? No, I did not. You grabbed my property. You grabbed my property, which is in my hand. That's assault. I couldn't come grab that thing out of your no, hand. It's full of money. Yeah, whatever it's full of, it's not my right to touch. I think you need to leave. Well, you're on my street. I mean, you need to move your stuff. Now I'm just sitting All here. All right, I'm calling the police. Free lemonade, everybody. <laughs> this has just turned into a free lemonade operation since that uh, man over there threatened to call the police. Free lemonade, everyone. Yes. Okay. Yep. You want free lemonade? Is this not a public place? Well, you have a right to think of a public place. No, you don't. Yeah, you do. I have a copy of the wiretapping statute if you'd like to see it. Okay. You'd be wrong. Okay. Free lemonade, anyone? You still can't. Um, I'm not going to arrest you for it today. Um, I remember you so said you that know. once the Dave Ridley on camera. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I have. But I, I would have some concerns about you telling people they can't record. That's crazy. Yeah, you're right. I have. I'm not going to arrest you for it today um, because I don't have to. Um, it's nice you're giving away uh, lemonade. Uh, you might find that the city code comes by at some point and tells you that because you have food products and you're not licensed that they, you can't be here. Um, we can take that up with the code. Okay, okay. even beverage Dominant. products. Even beverage products. We can talk to the folks that run the uh, the farmers market, and uh, we'll go from there. So you might hear from, like I said, the uh, city code enforcement here at some point, just so you're aware. Interesting. All right. So enjoy the lovely weather, and 
hopefully somebody will take you up on your free lemonade. Otherwise, it looks like you'll be drinking a lot of lemonade. Yep. I've had some uh, nice people come by and get some. A lot of kids. Good, good. Yeah, I'm sure kids were very happy to have lemonade. Good. Like I said, we do get complaints from other private citizens that uh, they don't want to be audio recording and you're audio recording them, then it's very likely we would arrest you at that point. Just okay, and I would challenge that on the grounds that that is not a violation I, of the wiretapping I, statute. I have no idea. And I have the statute I, we can look at right I have, here. I don't know where you would challenge it or how. That's a decision for a defense if you're arrested. Well, the way it's challenged is it's on the basis of the definition of oral communication within the you statute. Can, Listen, it's and not if, something for you and I to discuss. If you get arrested, you can use that in court. Well, so wouldn't you like to know, though? A, I, I'm already aware of it, thank you. All right, here it is. Enjoy your afternoon, and enjoy the nice weather. Okay, you too. Thanks. All right, so I'll read the wiretapping statute into the camera here. Oral communication means any oral communication uttered by a person exhibiting an expectation that such communication is not subject to interception. So being as how we're in public right now, that is definitely not a violation of the wiretapping statute. Free lemonade. It would fit in a cup. Pretty cute, man. <laughs> 